I can't stress to you how big a brand Tag Heuer is in Australia. So when I started Time and Tide in 2014, the thought that a decade later, I would be launching a watch in collaboration with Tag Heuer would have boggled my mind. Australia is massively overrepresented in Tag Heuer's market share, and it is because this watch aligns with our lifestyle so well. We love a sports watch, we love a rugged watch, we love a Swiss watch, and we love a quality watch. Come with me as we break down this beautiful rose gold titanium Aquaracer Solograph Sundowner. Let's go. Time and Tide's done several limited editions now, but we've never touched quartz, and I don't think I ever really intended to. But when the prospect of doing a watch with Tag Heuer came up, and we started to go down the route of it being an adventurous watch, and we started to look at colors like khaki and gray and rose gold, it occurred to me that an adventurous watch really needs to be something you just grab and go. Something that's tough, something that's light, and something that potentially could use elements, natural elements to power it, because that really feeds into that adventure narrative. And I landed on the Solograph. The Solograph was first launched in 2022, and speaking to the Australian brand manager, this was a watch that in its first six months was so popular that there was a six month wait to get your hands on one. So this was surprisingly popular for a brand that are better known for mechanical watches. All of those things gave me absolutely no qualms in doing a Time and Tide Quartz limited edition. This is a solar powered watch with a solar cell or a solar accumulator that stores the power. And if you actually pull the crown out of this watch when it has charge, it will sit in your drawer for four years holding charge that you've accumulated through light sources. So all these things take this to me is it's elevated from a standard ticking quartz movement. There are some real upsides of quartz and let's start with the first one, how this watch feels on the wrist. It is so light. This is a titanium, a sandblasted grade two titanium case and it's on a fabric strap. So there's already a lot of weight that is removed from those two elements, but the lack of a heavy movement inside that case makes it even more comfortable. However, George Bamford, Tag Heuer expert and fellow sparring partner on About Effing Time put this watch on his wrist and said, oh, I'm surprised by the heft and the weight. So I don't think you're going to put this on and think it feels slight. I expect that you're going to put it on and just forget that it's on during the day, which to me is another positive. As an adventurer's watch, it's not going to sweat in hot conditions. There are a lot of upsides to that quartz movement. But let's get to the Goldilocks zone. 40 millimeter diameter, 47.5 millimeters lug to lug, and just 11.5 in terms of thickness on the wrist. So this is a dream to wear. And if you put into the equation the fact that this doesn't weigh and, and sort of move around on this fabric strap, you really have a watch that frankly can't be beaten for, for comfort. Now, in terms of its adventure potential, this is a 200 meter water resistant watch. So the Aqua in the name is well deserved. And it also has the most forgiving case I think I've ever worn. I've been wearing this watch for six months and I cannot see a scratch. That's because this sandblasted titanium hides scratches beautifully. Now the bezel is dodecagonal and it has an excellent bezel feel. You could call it tensile in terms of the resistance you get and the, the definiteness of each click into place. And it also has no play whatsoever going back against that. This is a unidirectional bezel. It only goes one way. I can't quite express what it means to me to have a Time and Tide logo double signed with Tag Heuer on this or any watch. And this is something that will be very special to me and to the business. Time and Tide's logo in a shield at six on the dial. Therefore, this is not just a double signed dial, this is a double shielded dial. The strap is one of the coolest things about this watch and it's definitely the thing that I was frankly surprised that Tag Heuer would meet me on. I had to have this adventurous watch on a strap. It had to be khaki, it had to be the perfect tone of khaki. I think we've achieved that. This is punchy enough to really have a solid color. 
but it has a trace of desaturation already. So it has a nicely pre-faded look to it, but it's still a solid and punchy color. Now there is a point I need to raise with you. Do you remember that feeling when you get a new pair of shoes and you walk out going, oh my gosh, what, these are so squeaky. These are so, am I gonna be able to live like this? You're gonna have that moment with this strap. It is super stiff and starchy when you get it out of the box. I can promise you, <laughs> trust me, look at the way this has now molded to my wrist. And when I take this off, you'll see that all of that stiffness and starchiness of this very lovely woven strap well and truly diminishes with time. That's basically in the shape of my wrist. The keepers are in a sandblasted gold tone, which I think is really thoughtful of Tag Heuer. I didn't ask for it to be exactly this tone, but it matches the finishing of the case perfectly. And it has this slightly tough luxe feel to it. There's something about this sandblasted sort of dull gold that just looks superb. Now, in case you want to, at some point, pick up another strap like the <laughs> Bark and Jack exclusive to Time and Tide three pack, all of which I think would look good with this. It's a 21 millimeter lug width, which means that you just have to keep that in mind when you're buying your next NATO strap. Now, usually with a quartz movement, there's not much to talk about. However, this is not a typical quartz movement. This is the TH500-00, which is in fact a citizen movement that has been reconfigured by Le Jupere, which gives it its Swiss designation. Now, in terms of how much light you need to get this baby running, 10 seconds in battery light or natural light, we'll see this watch start moving and only 10 hours of light will give this six months worth of charge. And that's where the adventurer part comes in. You wear this for a day in normal conditions, it stays charged for six months and you can pull it out of the drawer or pull it off the dresser and you know that that time is going to be accurate. And here's a little trick. If you want to leave this watch in your drawer for, let's just say, four years, <laughs> but you want that charge to be held, you just pull the crown out and it will freeze and hold charge for four years. Now, if you have an Aquaracer Solograph, you're gonna know that there is a standard nautical star case back. However, Tag Heuer very generously, and I think very smartly, offered to do this to the case back of this watch. The Time and Tide Anchor honeycomb pattern just looks superb. And why is this watch called the Time and Tide Tag Heuer Sundowner? The reason is because this is 100% an adventurer's watch. And the Sundowner in these colors, when you're deep in the Australian interior, this is the combination that you will see on a particularly dramatic sunset. You will see the rose gold glinting. You will see the galvanic sheen of a body of water that's gray. You will see gray storm clouds. You will see nature in all of its force and fury in Australia. I love the name, the Sundowner. The other thing that Sundowner means in Australia is chin chin, a drink. This is a celebration. This is a watch that marks 10 years of time and tide in Australia. And thanks to Australia, we have been able to grow our business and expand. So when the sun sets in one place, it rises in another. And I bring this review to you from London where the sun is setting now, which means it's rising in Australia. And anyone that buys this watch becomes part of 250 people only that are a very special group. And I look forward to meeting you and you sharing your story of this watch. I hope you enjoy this. I can't wait to hear your thoughts in the comments. Would you consider a solograph? Do you consider this watch an elevation of quartz? Does this cross a sacred line? If so, we need to talk. I'll meet you down there. We'll fight it out. As for those that love it, I'll meet you down there for a hug. See you soon.